Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to our Lenten services tonight. We are pleased to have you with us. We are doing the theme of seeking this Lent, and specifically we are reflecting on um, seeking God and telling our own stories of seeking God. So in just a moment, uh, I'm the warm-up act for Pastor Christina. In just a moment, she's going to share a story of a biblical figure who did some seeking of God, and then we'll flow that out as the uh, season of Lent continues. And then we are doing uh, our service following that, um, Behold, Behold the Light, is that the name of it? Behold Our Light? Behold our light? Okay, thank you. I did my homework, I promise. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not holding the evening prayer, but it's, uh, it's an evening prayer that's really quite beautiful, and uh, we're really excited to share it with you this night. So after just a few moments, we will uh, begin our teaching time. Let us pray. Holy God, listening is always easier said than done. We shuffle into this space and try to quiet our minds, but the list of distractions is long. We need your help to listen. So today we ask that you would soak us in your word, dust the cobwebs from our ears, Stir our souls awake, crack open our hearts to make room for you, scoop us up, put us in your pocket, carry us wherever you go. We want to hear you, really hear you, so speak to us now, with hope we pray. So as Pastor Jonathan said, throughout Lent, we are reflecting on what it means to be God-seeking people, and we're asking honest questions to deepen our faith and our understanding. As we thought about these midweek services, we decided to do two things. First, it's always wise to return to God's Word. So Pastor Jonathan and I are taking turns looking at the stories of God-seeking people who we meet in Scripture. And second, we always want to remember that we are created for relationship. And one of the ways that we build relationship with each other is to listen to each other's stories. So we're going to take turns sharing our own stories of seeking God. And finally, in our last week together, we'll invite you to have some conversation together and share your own stories of seeking God. But tonight, we're going to meet Ruth, and we'll begin with this reading. A reading from Ruth. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem and Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The, na the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about ten years, both Malon and Kilian also 
died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, Would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. And then they wept loud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, there will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well, even if death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So what do you already know about Ruth? can just shout out your answers. What do you already know about Ruth? She lost her son. She lost her husband. Naomi was the mother, and Ruth was one of the daughters-in-law. So Naomi's husband died, and then both of Naomi's sons died. What else do we know about Ruth? She's a Moabite. What was this? She stuttered. Stubborn. (laughs) I I think somebody else stuttered. (laughs) Maybe Aaron. (laughs) She was stubborn. (laughs) What else do we know about her? She was one of the ones who lost her husband. Yes. Yes. Married Boaz. That's later, but yes, she marries Boaz. (laughs) So we know she was a woman. We know that she was not an Israelite. She was a Moabite. Moab was the region across the Dead Sea to the east of Bethlehem and Judah. So she was a foreigner. Some might have even called her an enemy of Israel. She didn't worship the God of Israel. She worshipped a tribal god named Kamos. Naomi's husband took Naomi and their sons to Moab because there was a famine in Israel and Ruth was one of the Moabite women that their sons married. And like we said, after 10 years, the sons died. So Ruth was widowed and at that time, Ruth was childless. But she's one of the five women named in the genealogy or the family tree of Jesus that Matthew includes in his gospel. So somewhere along the way, Ruth becomes the great-grandmother of of King David. Tonight, we heard the first part of her story, of the famine, of her becoming a widow, 
and of her decision to leave her homeland, to leave her God, and to follow her Israelite mother-in-law into a strange land. We also get her confession. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. And one of the questions we're asking in this season of Lent is who will you listen to? And the Benedictine author Joan Chittister, writing about Ruth and Orpah and Naomi, describes Ruth as one who seeks God beyond the boundaries of the past. She didn't only listen to the voices of her culture and her tradition, but she listened to God, to the God of Israel, who is a God of becomings, a God of possibility. And as I reflected on Ruth's story, I thought of another young woman from the Middle East who sought a life unbounded by the past, Malala Yousafzai was born in Pakistan in the part of the world that would have been known as the Persian Empire in, ancient, in the ancient world. And Malala's father was a school teacher who wanted his daughter to have access to the same education as the boys in their country. But when the Taliban took control of her town in 2008, and Malala was 11, the Taliban said that girls could no longer go to school. And so Malala spoke out against the discrimination. And four years later, when she was 15, she was shot by a masked gunman who wanted to silence her. And thankfully, she survived. Malala went on to create a nonprofit that works to gain access to education for all girls. And in 2014, she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. And in 2020, she graduated from Oxford University in England. Both Ruth and Malala, young women of different faiths, sought lives beyond the boundaries of the past, beyond the boundaries of their cultures and what was familiar. In her story about Ruth, Chittister writes about the difference between willed change and unwilled change, saying that willed change is what I seek and what I shape, while unwilled change is what seeks me and reshapes me. So what do we know about change? We love it. No. <laughs> so what do we know about change? It hard. It's hard. What else? Unpredictable. Unpredictable. Scary. Scary. Not, always Not always fair. And inevitable. And inevitable. <laughs> Disruptive. Disorienting. Uncomfortable. Those are the words that spring to mind. But change can be hopeful, too. Change opens us to new experiences and understandings and cracks us open to God in new ways. The story of Ruth helps us see how that might happen. And this Lent, I pray we may remain open and curious to how the changes in our lives are helping us to encounter God in new ways. And may we also center God's voice in our lives. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures, we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. A reading from Ruth. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem and Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Imelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the names of his sons were Mahan and Chilion. They were Ephrites from Bethlehem and Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Imelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The names of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both Malhan and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb, that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters. It has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. There I will be buried. May the Lord do this, and so to me, and more as well, even if death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. The light shines in the darkness.
peace from above and for our salvation. Pray for the peace of the whole world and the unity of all your people. Give our prayer, O Lord. Give our prayer, O Lord. We pray for the well being of the church and for all servants of the gospel. Pray for this congregation and for all who worship and serve here. Give our prayer, O Lord. Give our prayer, O Lord. We pray for the health of creation and for an abundant harvest that all may be fed. Pray for public servants, those who protect us, and for all leaders in government. Give our prayer, o Lord. Give our prayer, o Lord. We pray for those who work for peace, for justice, for healing, and for protection. Pray for those who are sick, who are suffering, and for all who grieve. Give our prayer, o Lord. Give our prayer, o Lord. We pray for deliverance in the time of wrath, danger, affliction, and of need. give thanks for those who have gone before us and are at rest in you. and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life. Give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
as you leave this place. May God bless you with seeking. Seek out the hungry, seek the weary, seek the good in every person you pass. Seek out the hopeful, seek the faithful, seek God in each of us. As you seek and as you wonder, may you find what you are looking for. In the name of our loving God, who is always seeking us, go now in peace. Amen. Amen.